Hello students my name is Alok Simwal and in today's lecture I am going to discuss about classification and mode of action of antiarrhythmic agents As we discussed earlier antiarrhythmic agents or drugs are also known as cardiac dysrhythmic medications These represent a group of pharmaceuticals that are used to suppress abnormal rhythms of the heart such as atrial fibrillation atrial flutter ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation the ultimate goal of antiarrhythmic drug therapy is to restore normal rhythm and conduction when it is not possible to revert to normal sinus rhythm drugs may be used to prevent more serious and possibly lethal arrhythmias from occurring antiarrhythmic drugs are classified into four main classes these include class 1 sodium channel blockers class 2 beta blockers class 3 potassium channel blockers and class 4 calcium channel blockers few miscellaneous agents are also used these agents are adenosine electrolyte supplements like magnesium and potassium salts digitalis compounds and atropine Class one drugs are sodium channel blockers. Drugs in this category includes quinidine, procainamide, disopyramide, lidocaine, phenytoin sodium, maxillotine. propofenon and tokenide class second drugs includes beta blockers important drugs of this category are timolol etinolol metoprolol propranolol esmolol and is butylol class third drugs are potassium channel blockers drugs in this category are amiodarone sotalol and dofetilide class fourth drugs are calcium channel blockers drugs in this category includes verapamil nifedipine diltiazem and nicardipine next is mode of action of antiarrhythmic agents so before starting mode of action we have to understand few important terms related to the topic action potential action potentials are nerve signals neurons generate and conduct these signals along their processes in order to transmit them to the target tissues upon stimulation they will either be stimulated inhibited or modulated in some way an action potential is a rapid rise and subsequent fall in voltage or membrane potential across a cellular membrane with a characteristic pattern sufficient current is required to initiate a voltage response in a cell membrane if the current is insufficient to depolarize the membrane to the threshold level an action potential will not fire examples of cells that signal via action potentials are neurons and muscle cells we will understand different phases of action potential by the following graph stimulus starts the rapid change in the voltage or action potential sufficient current must be administered to the cell in order to raise the voltage above the threshold voltage to start membrane depolarization depolarization is caused by a rapid rise in membrane potential by opening of sodium channels in the cellular membrane 
resulting in a large influx of sodium ions. Membrane repolarization results from a rapid sodium channel inactivation as well as a large efflux of potassium ions resulting from activated potassium channels. Hyperpolarization is a lowered membrane potential caused by the efflux of potassium ions and closing of potassium channels. Resting state is when membrane potential returns to the resting voltage that occurred before the stimulus occurred. Neurons typically send signals over long distances by generating and propagating action potentials over excitable axonal membrane. So action potential is a brief reversal of membrane potential in which the membrane potential changes from minus 70 millivolt to plus 30 millivolt. Cardiac muscle action potential have five main phases. Phase 0 is depolarization phase. Phase 1 when sodium channel closes. Phase 2 is the Plato phase. Phase 3 when repolarization occurs. And phase 4 is resting phase. There is also a period when second action potential cannot be initiated and this period is known as absolute refractory period. Now mode of action of sodium channel blockers. Sodium channel blockers bind to and block the fast sodium channels that are responsible for the rapid depolarization phase 0 of fast response cardiac action potentials. This type of action potential is found in non-nodal cardiomyocytes, for example, atrial and ventricular myocytes and Purkinje tissues. We all know that slope of phase 0 depends on the activation of fast sodium channels and the rapid entry of sodium ions into the cell. So blockage of these channels decreases the slope of phase 0 which also leads to a decrease in the amplitude of action potential. Here you can see the decrease of slope by different sodium channel blockers. The principal effect of reducing the rate and magnitude of depolarization by blocking sodium channels is a decrease in conduction velocity in non-nodal tissue. It is well known that faster a cell depolarizes the more rapidly adjacent cells will become depolarized leading to a more rapid regeneration and transmission of action potentials between cells. Therefore, blocking sodium channels reduces the velocity of action potential transmission within the heart. This can serve as an important mechanism for suppressing tachycardias that are caused by abnormal conduction. Sodium channel blockers are classified in three classes according to their effect on sodium channels. Class 1st A includes quinidine which has moderate sodium channel blockage effect. Class 1st B includes lidocaine which produces weak sodium channel blockage. While flaconide which is a class first C drug tend to block sodium channels strongly. Next is mode of action of class second drugs beta blockers. For mode of action refer my previous lecture mode of action of antihypertensive drugs. Mode of action of class third potassium channel blockers. Potassium channel blockers bind to and block the potassium channels that are responsible for phase 3 repolarization. Therefore, blocking these channels slows repolarization which leads to an increase in action potential duration and an increase in effective refractive period. 
On the electrocardiogram, this increases the QT interval which represents the time taken for ventricular depolarization and repolarization. This is the common effect of all class 3rd antiarrhythmic drugs. The electrophysiological changes prolong the period of time that the cell is unexcitable and therefore make the cell less excitable. By increasing the ERP, which is effective refractive period, these drugs are very useful in suppressing tachyarrhythmias caused by re-entry mechanism. Re-entry occurs when an action potential remerges into normal tissue when that tissue is no longer refractory. Next is mode of action of class 4th calcium channel blockers. We already discussed mode of action of calcium channel blockers in the topic anti-anginal drugs. So for the detailed mode of action of calcium channel blockers refer my previous lecture mode of action of anti-anginal drugs. Thank you.